In this podcast episode, Andrew Huberman, a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine, discusses the psychology in neuroscience of tenacity and willpower. He explores the concept of willpower as a limited resource and presents evidence from studies conducted by Roy Baumeister and colleagues that support this idea. Huberman explains that tenacity and willpower are distinct from habit execution, which refers to behaviors that can be performed without much effort or willpower. Willpower, on the other hand, requires intervention in our default neural processes and the ability to resist certain behaviors or thoughts. It involves effort and energy, and can be influenced by various factors. One important factor that affects willpower is the autonomic nervous system, which consists of the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for generating states of alertness and action, while the parasympathetic nervous system promotes relaxation and rest. The balance between these two branches affects our level of tenacity and willpower. Factors such as sleep deprivation, physical and emotional pain, and distractions can diminish our ability to draw on tenacity and willpower. Baumeister's research on ego depletion suggests that willpower is a limited resource that can be depleted with each successive use. In one study, participants were asked to resist eating cookies or radishes before attempting a difficult puzzle. The results showed that those who had to resist the cookies gave up sooner on the puzzle compared to those who had to resist the radishes. This led to the conclusion that willpower is a limited resource that can be drained. However, Huberman acknowledges that the concept of willpower as a limited resource has been controversial. Other researchers, such as Carol Dweck, have conducted meta-analyses and experiments that contradict Baumeister's findings. They argue that willpower is not a finite resource, but rather a mindset that can be cultivated and strengthened. Despite the controversy, Huberman emphasizes the importance of taking care of foundational modulators of tenacity and willpower, such as sleep and stress management. He suggests exploring zero-cost tools and protocols for improving sleep and managing stress, as these factors significantly impact our ability to engage tenacity and willpower. In terms of the underlying neural mechanisms of tenacity and willpower, Huberman introduces a brain structure that he finds fascinating and believes is crucial for generating tenacity and willpower. This brain structure, which he refers to as a hub, integrates information from various neural circuits and plays a central role in allocating mental and physical resources toward specific activities or resisting certain behaviors. However, subsequent studies attempted to replicate Baumeister's findings and raised questions about the interpretation of the results. One such study conducted by Dr. Carol Dweck found that the effect of glucose on willpower depended on the individual's belief about willpower and glucose. If someone believed that willpower was a limited resource and that glucose was the limiting factor, then ingesting glucose would improve their willpower. However, if someone believed that willpower was unlimited and not dependent on glucose, then they could engage in challenging tasks without the need for glucose. Huberman emphasizes that regardless of the belief about willpower and glucose, there is evidence pointing to a specific brain area called the anterior mid-cingulate cortex as the seat of tenacity and willpower. This brain area has been implicated in various studies through neuroimaging, lesion studies, and anatomical tracing. It is directly connected to other brain areas involved in autonomic control, reward systems, context and strategy setting, and more. Huberman highlights the importance of understanding that willpower is not a simple on-off switch but rather a graded response. It can manifest as the sense of, I will, or, I won't, in different situations. The anterior mid-cingulate cortex needs access to information about context and reward to modulate tenacity and willpower effectively. He also mentions that the anterior mid-cingulate cortex is subject to plasticity, meaning it can be modified and strengthened. Superagers, individuals with exceptional cognitive abilities even in old age, have been found to have a larger anterior mid-cingulate cortex compared to their peers. 
This suggests that there are specific actions and mindsets that can increase the activity and size of this brain area. Huberman continues by discussing a study by Lisa Feldman Barrett and her colleagues that further supports the role of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex in tenacity and motivation. He also mentions a study by Joe Parvizi, who stimulated different regions of the cingulate gyrus in awake patients and found that stimulation of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex induced feelings of perseverance and willpower. Huberman introduces the concept of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, a brain region that plays a crucial role in generating tenacity and willpower. He explains that this region receives information from various parts of the brain and generates a sense of resistance and urgency to push back against external or internal pressures. Stimulation of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex has been found to create a sensation of pressure and the need to marshal resources to resist or overcome challenges. Huberman discusses a study by Colum and colleagues that explored the relationship between cardiovascular exercise and brain volume in aging individuals. The study found that engaging in three one-hour sessions of moderate-intensity cardiovascular training per week increased the volume of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. This increase in volume was also observed in the white matter tracks connecting different brain areas. Huberman suggests that engaging in cardiovascular exercise, particularly when it involves resistance and effort, can activate and strengthen the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, leading to increased tenacity in willpower. He emphasizes the importance of engaging in activities that we resist or find challenging in order to activate the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. These activities can include physical exercise, cognitive tasks, or even resisting certain behaviors. Huberman refers to these activities as micro-sucks because they require effort and resistance. By incorporating these micro-sucks into our routines, we can build up our capacity for tenacity and willpower. Huberman also highlights the need to strike a balance and avoid pushing ourselves to the point of unhealthy behaviors or excessive resistance. He suggests finding activities that are challenging but safe and enjoyable. He mentions the importance of playfulness and curiosity in engaging with these activities. Furthermore, Huberman discusses the potential link between the anterior mid-cingulate cortex and the will to live. He suggests that the activation and strengthening of this brain region may be associated with longevity and a sense of purpose and motivation in life. Huberman continues by explaining that the anterior mid-cingulate cortex is a crucial brain area associated with tenacity and willpower. While it is not the sole determinant of these qualities, it plays a significant role in allowing individuals to express and engage in tenacity and willpower. Moreover, the ability to engage this brain area in a closed-loop fashion strengthens the neural circuits and makes them more accessible in the future when faced with challenging situations. The key takeaway is that individuals can increase their tenacity and willpower by triggering the activation of the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. Huberman highlights a study that shows how stress relief can serve as a natural resilience mechanism. When individuals successfully withstand stress and experience its removal, they feel a sense of reward and well-being. This reward reinforces the process of tenacity and willpower, making it easier to navigate future stressful situations. Huberman also discusses the importance of autonomic function in relation to tenacity and willpower. Sleep deprivation, pain, emotional distress, and distractions can diminish these qualities. Therefore, taking care of autonomic functions through practices like getting sufficient sleep, proper nutrition, and social connections is crucial for maintaining and enhancing tenacity and willpower. The podcast delves into the neural underpinnings of tenacity and willpower, focusing on the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. This brain area receives inputs from various regions related to reward, executive function, autonomic function, motor planning, and goal-seeking. By engaging in behaviors that require tenacity and willpower, individuals can strengthen the anterior mid-cingulate cortex and its connections, thereby increasing their capacity to access these qualities in the future.
Huberman cites a study that demonstrates how engaging in cardiovascular training can enhance the anterior mid-cingulate cortex and its connections. Participants who engaged in challenging exercise sessions experienced positive changes in their brain structure, making their brains appear younger compared to their age-related peers who did not engage in such activities. These findings suggest that engaging in challenging activities and overcoming resistance can have long-term benefits for tenacity and willpower. The podcast also explores how these findings can be applied to various domains, such as cognitive learning and physical exercise. Engaging in challenging tasks, learning new skills, and resisting temptations can all contribute to building tenacity and willpower. Huberman emphasizes the importance of safety and encourages individuals to choose activities that are healthy and promote well-being. Furthermore, the podcast discusses the role of rewards in reinforcing tenacity and willpower. While Huberman advises against frequent or regular rewards, occasional rewards after successfully engaging in challenging tasks can further strengthen these qualities. The study mentioned earlier suggests that rewarding oneself for overcoming stressful episodes can increase the capacity to handle future stressors. Huberman concludes by highlighting the need for individuals to decide how they want to build up their tenacity and willpower. He encourages listeners to engage in activities that challenge them and activate the anterior mid-cingulate cortex. However, he emphasizes the importance of psychological and physical safety throughout the process. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe.